The Kvalinsk culture was a Middle Copper Age for Eastern Europe named Enneolithic culture of the first half of the 5th millennium BC, discovered at Kvalinsk on the Volga in Saratov Oblast, Russia. It was preceded by the early Enneolithic Samara culture, from which it came, and succeeded by the late Enneolithic, early Yamna culture, into which it developed. Topic. Extent and duration The Kvalinsk culture extended from Saratov in the north to the North Caucasus in the south, from the Sea of Azov in the west to the Ural River in the east. A good sprinkling of calibrated C-14 readings obtained from material in the graves of the type site date the culture certainly to the approximate window, 5000-4500 BC. This material is from Kvalinsk I, or early Kvalinsk. Kvalinsk II, or Late Kvalinsk, is Late Enneolithic. Some regard Kvalinsk I as Early Enneolithic, contemporary with the Samara culture. Gimbutas, however, believed Samara was earlier and placed Kvalinsk I in the developed Enneolithic. Not enough Samara culture dates and sites exist to settle the question. Topic. Sites The Kvalinsk type site is a cemetery, 30 meters by 26 meters, containing about 158 skeletons, mainly in single graves, but some two to five together. They were buried on their backs with knees contracted. Twelve of the graves were covered with stone cairns. Sacrificial areas were found similar to those at Samara, containing horse, cattle and sheep remains. An individual grave was found in 1929 at Krivoluchi with grave goods and the remains placed on ochre, face up, knees contracted. A 67 meters high earthen kurgan at Nalchik, approximately 30 meters in diameter, contained 121 individual graves of remains placed face up, knees contracted, on ochre with a covering of stone. <laughs> Artifacts Kvalinsk evidences the further development of the Kurgan. It began in the Samara with individual graves or small groups sometimes under stone. In the Kvalinsk culture one finds group graves, which can only be communal on some basis, whether familial or local or both is not clear. With the advent of DNA testing, perhaps someday it will be. Although there are disparities in the wealth of the grave goods, there seems to be no special marker for the chief. This deficit does not exclude the possibility of a chief. In the later Kurgans, one finds that the Kurgan is exclusively reserved for a chief and his retinue, with ordinary people excluded. This development suggests a growing disparity of wealth, which in turn implies a growth in the wealth of the whole community and an increase in population. The explosion of the Kurgan culture out of its western steppe homeland must be associated with an expansion of population. The causes of this success and expansion remain obscure. We do know that metal was available both in the Caucasus and in the southern Urals. The Kvalinsk graves included metal rings and spiral metal rings. However, there is no indication of any use beyond ornamental. The quality of stone weapons and implements reaches a high point. The Krivoluchi grave, which Gimbutas viewed as that of a chief, contained a long flint dagger and tanked arrowheads, all carefully retouched on both faces. In addition there is a porphyry axe head with lugs and a haft hole. These artifacts are of types that not too long after appeared in metal. There is also plenty of evidence of personal jewelry, beads of shell, stone and animal teeth, bracelets of stone or bone, pendants of boar tusk. The animals whose teeth came to decorate the putative Indo-Europeans are boar, bear, wolf, deer and others. Some of these teeth must have been difficult to acquire, a labor perhaps that led to a value being placed upon them. Whether they were money is not known. The hard goods leave no record of any great richness. There is some evidence that wealth may have consisted of perishable goods. In fact, in many similar cultures of later times, wealth was reckoned in livestock. A recent study of the surface of the pottery also of many cultures, which recorded contact with perishable material while the clay was wet, indicates contact with cords and embroidered woven cloth, which the investigators suggest were used to decorate the pot. Topic. Notes Topic. Sources J. P. Mallory. Kvalinsk Culture. Encyclopedia of Indo-European Culture, Fitzroy Dearborn, 1997.
Maria Gimbutas, The Civilization of the Goddess, Harper San Francisco, 1991, ISBN 0 06 250368 5 or ISBN 0 06 250337 5. Topic. External links Bronze Age textiles of the Caspian Sea Maritime Steppes